All right. Like I said, um, I'm recently brought, been brought on with, with Arca Noah as of middle, about the middle of last month, I guess. So it's not been, not been with, with you know, officially with them, but I've been working, uh, doing some of the beta testing and stuff for during the beta stage. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and restart this. I was just need to make sure, but basically it's. Hey. No, this should be this should be good here. If I need, do, I need to speak up. I can. <laughs> All right. So the install is very much the same as they all of them have been with the that you know have had a um, a uh, CD install. Now, of course, this requires actually a DVD for the size because it's, it's over the size of a CD for quite some time now. So boot from hard disk, boot from the Arc OS, boot CD-ROM. Default values, you know, or main, you know, you boot with menu for your own option values. I'm going to go ahead and show that one just so you see what's in there. Uh, most of the time, you can probably use boot with default values unless you're using a modified uh, virtual machine, for instance. Um, if you use the default values for VirtualBox you can even boot with default values. But when you tweak them like I do for trying to get a little better uh, performance out of them, it goes with the defaults of what VirtualBox is, so you'll have to change them. Uh, for this install, I wouldn't have, on this machine, I wouldn't, need to, wouldn't actually need to change them. All right, basic help structure here. You can get some more help uh, with F1, depending on the context pages. All right, so modern hardware ACPI is what you'd use on most of the modern systems. Um, something like a T42, you can use the modern hardware ACPI. I figure most people are probably use uh, the older hardware so they get the APM uh, dr uh, driver from it where they can put it in suspend better and such but you can use even on a T42 you can use the modern hardware so anything newer than a T42 you have the you know that modern hardware where will definitely work on if Sorry. yes the older hardware is this still SMP kernel or uh, no, I believe it's not going to be the SMP hardware, uh, but a T42 doesn't have SMP. Uh, so if you were using something as SMP, if it was older, like you know, in the age of a T42, you'd probably still want the ACPI for getting the multi you know, SMP capability. All right. One thing I do change here, but you don't have to do it in this, you don't have to do it from this here, you could always do it from the regular install, is on ThinkPads, the A mouse driver uh, does not play well with the, uh, 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 with the track point, so I always, I always change it from here, but you can change it in the uh, installer as well. All right, so this is, these are basically, if, if you don't make any changes, these are, you know, these are basically, if you just was a default install, it's going to, these are the, these would be the defaults. Now, I tend to, for most of my installs, I get rid of the IDE because I don't have any IDE hardware. Even my CD-ROM is uh, AHCI, but it doesn't hurt to leave it in there. It should, it should put it second in, this, in, this, in the list. So therefore, the HCI would be used first anyhow. One thing that uh, like I said, uh, well, that's not the right one. Where am I at? All right, so then most of the rest of this, unless you know that you have something that you need to change, I don't, I've not came across an install that I needed to change these with the exception of, I had certain ones that did not turn on the support for support boot for US, from USB. 
I don't think even then it was necessary, but because it talks about requires mass storage support, I made sure it was checked to make sure that it didn't say, oh, well, let's not install the mass storage support. I don't think that'd be an issue, but that was the only thing I've ever changed besides the storage controllers on this page for any of my installs. Yeah. Yeah. You can solve that by taking that one and making it zero if you have an internal hard drive. How about this one? Yeah. Okay. This yeah. Drive, if you're an internal, if you have an internal DVD drive, you can make that zero, which gets rid of that problem for, where it looks for the phantom drive when it should be looking for the real drive. Okay. I, I don't know if it still happens in the GA, but it, it yeah. was happening in some of the later betas. Okay, yeah, I, I never, I never had it happen on any of my installs because I was using internal and I still never saw it. I also tested some with the external CD, you know, CD-ROM, but I, I, I had it happen with an internal. Yeah, it comes back in phase one and it's looking for drive T, which is of course not my CD-ROM. Okay, <laughs> so, so there's another potential place to need that. So there, there are reasons that this is. You know that these are that these are basically what this is going to do is determine what the setup is going to be when it um, boots to the install. Uh, often I put in here, which I'll go ahead and put my settings in here for the for the HCI. It's not really, it's, these are none of these are necessary for the for the install, um, but like the. S I put in there because that's what allows me to burn CDs with RSJ. Yes. I'm sorry. Where, where Is there any help for such parameters? The AHCI readmes has the tells you about those parameters. The like I said, the S basically what it does is it tells the AHCI driver to make available the uh, SCSI commands. So that, that's what makes it work with the RSJ driver. But the online help is not. What's that? The online help is not. Well, fine. Yeah, Basically, that's what you're. Yeah. The fish parameters was a red <laughs> Yeah. So, but the eight, you know, basically the the specific, like I said, this here is very limited in what it's going to tell you about because this is just getting you to boot off the DVD itself. This is, you know, this is not specifically. Um, like I said, you don't unless you have to go in here, you don't have to go in here. You can make all of the, any of these changes that you wanted to make. You can go ahead and let it boot into the regular uh, to just boot with defaults, and then make those changes in the installer section. I'm only I, I went in here because you might have one of the purposes of this particular screen is it allows you to make changes so that you can boot off the DVD in case you can't boot with the default parameters. And I'm wanting to make sure you understand, you know, some of the things that are available. Basically, it's, you know, it's just a simple way of getting into your system. Uh, in particular, one of the things that has a lot of capability in this, on this DVD, is to be able to go and do some uh, work on the drive, you know, on your, on your, if you can't boot into your regular partition for some reason, you can do some basic Troubleshooting off of the uh, DVD. Yes. Support boot from USB. Yes. Uh, yes, I can read that, but uh, why do you need this? Uh, let's put it another way. Um, if you already booted from the USB stick, you already booted from the USB stick. So I, I don't understand why you can select that. And is this web, this is also uh, relevant for normal operation? Does this change anything about the system when it runs normally, or is this? Only relevant now during this install phase. I, now th th I have, I'm not 100% sure on on this. What I believe this is is that just because you've got to this stage, this stage is relatively simple to get to. But to boot OS2, okay. the US the off of USB requires special set setup. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure that that's ready. This is just I think this is just preparing for that. It's not. I don't think it's actually where you can. You know, other than if that, that may need to be checked for being able to boot off a USB CD-ROM. So basically, for the second phase to, to boot the OS yes. from the USB stick, 
Yeah. But basically, once all this is done and you have your OSB installed on your hard disk, then basically this switch has no effect in any way. Not right? at that stage, it's no. For the, for the install, do you that phase? Yeah, this is, yeah, this is just the install. So this, like I said, this is just booting off the up to the installer is what this is for. Um, I've tested that already with our OS. The, the thing that's, that's going on here is that that checkbox is there by default in case you want to boot from an external USB controller. The confusion that people had with ECS is that you need to turn it on first. But since a lot of devices these days don't have a USB device built in, that's why it's switched on by default. This does not provide support booting from a USB stick. It's purely there for booting off of an external USB C D card. During the installation phase? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Alright. If you if this allows you to have network, you know, assuming that you're you know that you've got the drivers uh, for the you know for kind of, we'll call it a standard network you can uh, you can get network capability at the install or maintenance windows. You know you don't really you don't need it at the install phase, but you may need it for the uh, maintenance because you may have uh, may need to be able to get to the web to look up something. You know why am I having this problem type issue? Are you saying that I could mount an ISO at a IP address? No, that's not what this is doing. <laughs> so. If, when this thing boots up, so when I boot to the to the maintenance to the well, well to the installation window, I have the option of going to a maintenance window. From that maintenance window, I can bring up a browser and I can say, you know, what is causing this? You know, what would cause this error? Whatever the error is that I can't boot. You know, why can't I boot? Type thing. So if this is not necessarily so much for installation issues, but as you're going along, you're working along, and all of a sudden you're having a problem, you have the option to go look up something, even if you can't boot into your normal partition. So this basically, is, you can use this like, I don't typically put a maintenance partition on my systems. I know what most people do. I don't. This allows me to boot off the DVD and still be able to get to the network. Yes. Yes, OS2 only has IPv4 at this point. So, yes. You know, I don't have any idea what time frame, if any, for, for an IPv6. It, the amount of work involved is still uncertain, even. And you can edit the config sys, but you know. So, if, again, there's a lot of the stuff is gives you the ability to do things, not that you need to do such things. <laughs> but you might have a reason. Yeah. Um, the the multi language support is it, is it better to stay all English or? At this point, yes, because there's nothing but English at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, Arc OS 5 that just launched is, in, is English only, so there is no other, no other option at this point. Uh, but that's what I was talking about with the edit, the config sys. You, it gives you, like I said, a lot of power if you need to go and make those changes. I've, needed, I've done it before for checking something. I've, in reality, it's not something you're going to often need, but it gives you that, it has that ability if it's needed. Now, what you can't, well, one of the things it does have those and say, okay, boot mode by defaults to the installation program so that you can go into install. But even if you go into the installation program, you can from there go to the maintenance window. But you can boot straight to a command interface or straight into the maintenance system. So instead of, if you know that you're wanting to go into the maintenance system, instead of booting into the uh, installer, you can boot straight to the maintenance window. Again, like I said, it's not a big deal if you don't make that change because you can always get to the what you're after anyway. So, all right, then F10, save the changes, and now, now it's going to boot into the installation. Now, what it's booting into now is actually an, an 
OS2 or ARCA OS you know, boot. It's not at this stage, it's now booting into OS2. So that's the reason, like he was talking about that check mark for the CD ROM, that check mark needed to be on there if I was booting off of an external CD ROM, uh, well, DVD ROM at this point. It's got max CPU equals one. If we looked at the config sys, it has max CPU equals one, so only one processor gets initialized during this stage. But once we get booted into the system, then it'll use, a, you know, it'll have, by default, it'll use the, all your CPUs, assuming you've set it's, uh, you haven't changed the uh, config in some way to not be ACPI or not to use multiple CPUs. All right, so best overall font size we found is medium. That seems to work the best on all the systems, but it does give the option of changing to small or to large. Overall, medium seems to be, have been the best uh, that everybody's you know who's testing it has seen. Like I said, here we can go to system management. From the system management. Basically, you can get to your to the various tools to be able to do uh, uh, system. You know, if you're if you're trying to work on a system. Uh, from here, I'm on. A, I want to look at. Yeah, I don't like that one. Let's do this. Okay. All right, the readme.txt. This has quite a bit of information in it. And depending on your usage case, you may need to read it quite a bit of it. You may be able to go without looking at any of it, but that's going to be the problem is is that this has got um, support this tells us information on the VNC servers. It tells you know that's in there, it tells you about the system prerequisites. It tells you about the drive capabilities. You know, we can't use a GPT. We have to have a motherboard. No, not motherboard, that's silly. Uh, <laughs> MBR in there. Uh, anyhow, it's, it talks about the Aurora web browser. Which, like I told you, this thing has the ability to get on the web. It uses the Aurora web browser, which is one of the QT-based um, browsers that we were, like he was talking about earlier. That um, it, it, it ships with one here for being able to get out to the uh, web to be able to say, oh, what, what, what's going on with this? It could, be, it could be done during the install. It can be done during the uh, other issues. Uh, if you were having an install error, you could go in, you could come back into the system maintenance there, go to the web browser, open up a ticket, and upload the log files straight from here, you know, so... That is, you know, it wouldn't even have to move it to a uh, USB drive necessarily. You could just go straight into the web browser and upload it straight from, from in here. Um, UE, UEFI systems, if it's a pure UEFI system, it's, at this point it's not going to work. It has to have the compatibility layer and it has to be turned on to the compatibility layer. So that's what this, you know, so it's got information on that. This, this README has... Uh, Talks about, you know, like I said, the GenMac drivers. You may, so again, this may be something that uh, tells you exactly what you need to know, and you may not need to know it at all. Basically, if you have any issues, this is a place that you want to look at to see. Uh, it's a good idea to familiar, you know, to look through it possibly before you start. But if you have any issues, 
this is one of the first places you want to look at because it has a lot of documentation as to what might be needed that you're uh, may not have you know may not have been something that was known ahead of time without reading through it so uh, the readme.txt is definitely something I recommend uh, looking at particularly if you're having any issues all right so, and then I can restart the installer There's also, in that readme.txt, even has a few things that can be pertinent to you after the install because it tells you th how things will be installed during the process. So, all right, the welcome screen, click next. The end user license agreement, I'm going to let you all read the whole thing through here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you do have to scroll to the bottom of it, you know, so you have to read through the entire thing before you can click on the, the button. So, all right, this, this had, allows for different personalities. Now, I haven't played much with myself with the personalities, single volume, is like it talks about it. So it's, it's going to install it all everything onto a single volume and just it's going to go with some pre-selected options. Multiple volumes is like it says it's going to use multiple volumes during the install. Exactly what's on the enterprise workstation and what exactly is in these I, I'm not sure. These are these are set up so that it gives you the ability to choose an option um, and just let it go and it installs certain things by default. So this would install the SMB SIF server by default, for instance. Uh, I pretty much exclusively use the custom myself. Uh, most of the people that have used the predefined tend to be doing so with the single volume. Because if you're using a single volume, it, it has a pretty good you know, select, you know, default selections uh, selected. And it does give you some, tells you a bit about the personalities up here. One of the options during the pre-boot was to turn off this getting disk information. You typically don't want to do that. Uh, we might tell you to do so if you're having a problem for a specific purpose. But in general, if this has a problem, you're going to have a problem installing anyway, so there's not a lot of point in turning this off because this is going to tell you whether you're likely to have that problem. Now, if you've been installing on this same drive and this is just a reinstall, maybe you don't want to take the time for it to go through. That's one thing. But in general, uh, letting it do the disk check integrity is a good idea because it'll let you know if there's a problem uh, uh, involved. We can come in and manage volumes and I need to create one here. Okay, we'll say bootable. Yeah, I think I'm gonna be do something I hadn't done in many years is go ahead and install it on C drive. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put it at We'll just give it five owls in there. All right. And some changes. And make it startable. All right. Now I could just go in here and install the boot menu, which this boot man menu and installs here is not the IBM boot manager, it's the ARCA OS. I mean, ARCA, well, they call it Arca, the air boot installer. So uh, I don't care much for boot managers anymore. I used to use them for years and I just go, in this case, I don't need it. I'm not gonna put it in there. Uh, it's easier for me to come back in and to uh, set the other one startable again than it is try to get rid of the uh, 
<laughs> boot, man boot manager later. So it's not that hard. I, I did it the other day, but uh, if you need the, if you've got multiple, if, if you're not booting off of multiple boot drives, or if, unless you, if I'd set this to be a logical drive, then I would have to have a boot manager. Otherwise, uh, I just don't care for boot managers anymore. Let's see, make sure they're saved and exit. All right, it's unknown because it not, doesn't have a uh, file system on it yet. All right, I'm going to go ahead and use the system volume, but you can change the, where the networking components go. You can change where the default applications go, where the Unix compatibility, which is basically you, your USR, is at, and you can change where your temporary files are at. And which what well, file? It's always going to format this system volume. It is always going to f format this system volume. One more time. It is always going to format this system volume. <laughs> so it, it's not going to try to do an. Uh, it's not going to try to do an update. It's it will it will format the system volume. Yes. It will always format it. It doesn't. It doesn't check to see if it's empty. It formats it. Um, I think at this stage, I can, we can continue without my formatting it. At one point during the beta cycle, I would I had to format it at this point so that I could go on, and then it would format it again. <laughs> so it. Uh, so I know for a fact that it will. You know, does format it a second time. Yes. GFS, yeah. HFS, yes. We don't have fat. Um, where is that decision, and what, what's that based on? Well, right now, that ba the basis is that you can't boot off of fat. Uh, this here is That's only the, can't boot or the, bias can't. the OS2. There is no OS2 that can currently boot off of fat. Well, I shouldn't say not off of fat. Off of fat 32, you could boot off of fat, but there are. I believe at this point there are. I believe at some point something went in that required long file name support that the FAT couldn't handle. So Java, yeah, that sounds right. Java, the Java required. Yeah, it's. It, Yeah, I, I, I remember it had been a long time that, that things had been. I just couldn't remember what it was. The, the Java, it doesn't allow it. I mean, it, it could possibly be done, but why put the effort into it? Yeah. <laughs> only offered you HPFS at this point. Uh, like not the late, not the later. I think the later, I think the later uh, ecom stations did allow JFS. Because the trouble with HPFS is that if you have Linux, they have HPFS, but it's a different file system. Yeah. Uh, and so HPFS is very dangerous. I use Linux for backup for everything. Yeah. And it can't manage the OS2 system volume. I quit. I quit. I quit even loading the HPFS driver. For quite a while, I started. I started it again because I actually started putting them on. I started putting HPFS on some of my uh, USB drives because it didn't have the um, uh, journaling. I didn't want journaling on my uh, USB drive, so that was uh, the only thing I've been even used HPFS on in many years. So. Do you know if OS2 or Arcos JFS is the same as Linux JFS? It's not exactly the same, it, but it is compatible. Now, there's certain things that have to be. I know that there are certain th certain conditions <coughs> on that compatibility. As you <coughs> format it here, if you let when you let it format it, it should be compatible. 
if you go in and make changes, because like with our with our JFS, we can change the oh what is it uh, <coughs> block size? I believe it is. And if you change, I think I think it's the block size. If you change the block size, it won't work with the Linux. The Linux is set to I believe is set to the 4096. If I if I'm remembering correctly. So you'd expect a line that's coming in looking at a across JFS partition. <coughs> it should be that there may be uh, there may be certain things that would have to occur. It's been a long time since I've tried uh, doing it. I have done it in the past. Uh, as I recall, actually, the last time I did it, I took uh, a US. I took a Linux CD, booted off you know booted off the Linux CD, and actually ran the FS trim because I've got an SSD drive in here. I don't remember having to do anything. I just ran the, uh, oh, I took, actually I didn't put the CD, I, I put, pulled the hard drive out of here, hooked it through a uh, USB connector to my Ubuntu and ran the JFS uh, util uh, package, I ran the FS trim on it and it saw everything and just, you know, just ran it. There might have been something a little bit, you know, quirky about seeing the volume, you know, the directories or something possibly. It's been a while since I did it, but basically it was just there. You know, there was not, like I said, there might have been something about an extra layer of <coughs> directories or something. Something in the back of my mind says there might have been something a little bit different, yeah, but. I've in fact been reduced to keeping my ECS C partition on a separate disk and using a disk cloning machine to another identical uh, hard disk to do backup. And that's the only way I can guarantee if that first disk goes down, I can get back to where I was. I've tried with DFS, DFC, I've tried uh, the Taiwanese system, it's called DSMI, mm -hmm. supercomputing group. Mm -hmm. I've tried various things, and I am very, very nervous about the compatibility between Linux. Yeah. Two. Well, like I said, I, I, I booted I, I booted off the off the JFS, you know, off, I'm not off JFS, I booted off the Linux box, plugged in, you know, the USB and I ran the FS, you know, the, the the FS trim, so it's going in there. It's playing with the drive, and I didn't have any problems. So there's, while I can't guarantee there'd be no problems, I through the years that I've used the JFS, you know, pre previously with the Ecom station and now with the Arc OS, I've not seen any issues with our JFS in comparison. Like I said, I know that there can be issues. Extended attributes, I, okay, I could see that that could be a possibility. I, although J, the Linux one should handle it, what's, I, 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 but I haven't played, I rarely have extended, outside of my workplace shell, I don't have, <laughs> have it, so I haven't really played with it that way, so I hadn't thought about it, because most of my JFS stuff has not had EAs to be con considered. So yeah, yeah. So outside the EAs, like I said, I haven't played with. I haven't. My, most of my JFS stuff has not had EAs to be of an issue. So they're 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 very well. It could be EA issues that I'm not, you know, extended attributes that I haven't had to deal with. But like I said, what I when I the little bit I have done that could have possibly messed them up hasn't. But because I, I wasn't aware of them, <laughs> to, to worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. I just pull one out and push one in if I'm trying to recover a situation or if I'm trying to check that my iPads work. Yeah. Okay. Did you have. There's a question. And the magnetic volumes. I'm sorry, what was and, it? Uh, and the magnetic volumes. At the end, you set the, the volume as dark table. 
Is it required or not? If you have only one uh, volume of the, the, the disk. Oh, volumes. Yeah, okay, yeah. Well, I, I, I chose, in this case, I didn't choose, um, let's go back, because uh, you're asking what would you see if you had a single volume? Well, let's, go f let's go check it. It will mark a startable automatically. Yeah. So you still have you still have to choose which volume, but it'll you know it it just automatically. Yes. The same thing happens when you install a virtual box. If you just have a single volume, it will automatically mark that partition as startable since it's the only one that's available. Yeah. So what you lose is this here because you're saying I'm going to. You know, in this case, I'm telling it to use a B single volume, but you know, now what? What we? What you? All, okay, right. Yeah, just one additional question. While I'm reading temporary files, um, can, does ArcOS come with the OS2 loader that supports uh, run disk above uh, four gigabytes? Yes. Okay, so that might. Be. The, the, However, you select it from the temporary or is this too early in the installation process? No, because it's not available at that point. Okay. Until you're actually booted up, you're not going to be able to create the RAM disk to be able to set, and so then you have to go back into your config okay. sys. So yeah. Config yeah. Right. So the check volumes here, like I said, your seat, your, whatever drive you're, 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 you're going to is going to be formatted. However, if I was in here and I chose this drive for my default applications, it might not be showing up in here. And the reason it might not show up in here is because it needs a check disk. So check volumes gives you the option to go in here and do the check disk. So then let's go. I'm not going to do anything because I want it to go through quickly. And when it's done, ah, the wrong button. Close. It white it clears this out because it's going to always clear. If you do that, it's going to clear this out if you made any selections, because now it's saying okay, there there's possibly new selections to be had, because now that I've run the check disk, it's possible now that ones that weren't showing before. Are now showing in the list, so it will so it will clear those. So if you go, if you were, were to set any of these things first and go change the volumes or change you know check volumes or anything any of those things, at that stage it's going to come back in and uh, reset these because you, it doesn't know what's still valid. So it has to go check what's valid, and when it checks what's valid, it goes back to using the system volume by default. So if you make these changes. You make any changes here, you'll need to go make change, these changes again. That's one of the things that's in the README, for instance. So I was talking about things that being in the README. That's some of the things that are in there, but it's if you think about it, it makes sense, but it's not something that you would necessarily think about initially because you're thinking, oh, I already set that, and then you go next without really looking at it. So it's not one of the things that we liked about that, but we couldn't think of a, a way around it at this point because it needs you ha it has to go check to see what's you know what what it's you know what's changed. Maybe, maybe nothing changed, but we don't know that until we check. So. The format there, what is that doing? Oh, let me go back. Oh, yeah, let me go back then. Um, I was just going to point that out. Dude. Yeah. There is a okay. So the other the other option here, let's say that I uh, because it does not format these components down here by default. Now in this case, because it's using the system volume, it's going to, but it, it does not change. So if I had this thing set to the E drive, it's not going to format these by default. But if I wanted it formatted, I can come in here and do the format. Yeah. It will show in this list. The warning is, is if you do that, 
the list up above will default back to whatever the top drive was. So yeah. you have to watch that. If you want to install the Z and you have a C drive, it'll default back to C as the installed drive if you were to form if you format something. So so yeah, the the format, you know, so it, it does um, so in this case, I already uh, I was putting it all on a single drive. But if I if I if I'd created a second one while I was in here, which I can actually, there's no reason not to. I'd come over here, say, okay, I want to create a new volume. And I guess I can't create it because the way I set the thing up. Yeah. Okay. Let me get through this then. All right. So we'll just go ahead and leave it as is. All right, so next. All right, country, code page, time zone, fairly uh, self-descriptive there. All right, if you want CMonkey, and if you want it the default browser, you, you can we're assume, we decided to assume that if you want CMonkey, you probably want it as the default. If you don't, you'll have to uncheck it. So, uh, all right. So, the the H, the HCI drivers, you know, options I put in there earlier. We've now got it set it so that if you put it in the pre-boot menu, most of the things that you put into the pre-boot menu will cut, will feed across into the installer. Uh, such as where I this is where I was talking about. I wouldn't have had to have changed the A mouse driver because I could do it here. Uh, but because I've made the change there, it does change it here. Uh, the universal audio driver is what I'd want on this particular system. All right, I typically install the Samba server. It does a it does a pretty nice job installed from here. Uh, there are good WPIs available now as well. Uh, when I first started putting Samba in, it was grabbing pieces from here and there and yawn. This is really kind of nice. <laughs> if you don't install at that point in time, yeah. is there an easy way to install it on when everything is set up? Yeah, there's a W, well, there's, you could, you could, there's a WPI it's being installed from, so it could be done from the CD-ROM, or there's a WPI on NetLabs, okay. you know, yeah. It's also a selective install for network. Select Selective install for networking. Yeah, I forgot that that's it's so in there now. You get a second chance to forget something. Yeah, yeah. There's, it, it's very forgiving, I guess you could say. What's that? You have two network cards. I do, but I. It, you could, except for my second one is one of the unsupported Gen Mac, <laughs> so it's not in here. But if you had two, you can add the second one in here. Uh, my mine's a uh, mine's a Intel 5100, which I've got working with Gen Mac, but it's not one of the supported ones with Gen Mac, so it's not in the uh, uh, Arc OS install. Uh, none, none of none of the Unsupported working ones are in there. Only the uh, I don't know what the best way to call them because they're not exactly supported in a sense anymore. <laughs> but the ones that are, were originally the supported cast is what's in there. If it finds more than one uh, network card, it will be shown on the display if it's supported. So now then. You can set the computer name, work group name, use default username, home directory. So again, you, this, this is similar to the ones before. If you're on a single volume, it's going to use the system volume, by, you know, by default. But you could tell it to be, you know, put the use the home directory on a different uh, drive. And you can configure the 
static IP here if you so desired. It's, it's got somewhat, it's got some checking on your, on the, I should mention there is some checking going on here, but we are not aggressively checking. So you can put some invalid stuff in here and we're not going to catch it. You know, we're, we're expecting you to put the, the right stuff in there. We do some rudimentary checking, but we're not doing a, uh, doing a real strong checking at this point. If you have multiple network drives, can you use multiple uh, IPs? Sorry, multiple network cards. Interests. Yes, although not from here. You'll have to wait till you're booted into the system because there's not. It, it doesn't bring. I, I've not seen it bring a second uh, screen here for it. And here's where it'll tell you the, some of the different things. You know. It, it, important pieces. One of the very, very important ones is the system volume. Again, that's because you want to make sure that the system volume is the right one because it is going to format it. So you don't want to format uh, some data drive you've got or something. So I do want to stress that, that you, you know, that that does get formatted because we're not necessarily used to that in, in general. We're forces of format. So tells you which net network card, which driver it's using, the home directory, you know, where you put your temporary files. So if I'd had the E drive here, it would have told me, told me it was that E volume, you know, DHCP selected, etc. Now then, how much time we got? I mean, it, all right. So I'm not going to go through the actual installed in. I mean, there's two. There's basically. The next stage is going to start copying files to the disk. I mean, I think we can <laughs> forego that then. Um, any other questions to wrap this up? I think there's only one important thing to remark here. Yeah. At this moment in time, nothing has changed on the disk unless you have done it yourself. So you could abort the installation and nothing would have changed unless you've gone into the, uh, the manager make a new partition, nothing has changed. Nothing has been formatted unless you format it. Yeah. So the only thing it's the only thing that's changed at this point is that I set this to be startable instead of this being startable. And I did that myself. So yeah. anything else? Yes. What about SMP mode? Uh, the preboot menu? What about it? SMP mode. SMP. 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 There is nothing in the preboot menu that you need to set up that does it automatically. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't, if it's set in the preboot menu to automate to a modern hardware with ACPI checked. It should by default install the SMB kernel and ACPI. There is nothing required to set it up unless you're installing in a virtual machine or you manually select that you want to install, for example, on an old system, that's, that's what it's called in the preboot menu, that it installs the Bob 4 kernel. Other than that, if you install Arca OS or ECS on a system, it defaults to ACPI and the SMP kernel, and SMP should be enabled by default. If it's not happening, something's going wrong. Yeah. And, uh, another question, because I had a bug. When the checking for, uh, for volumes before uh, updating the target list, okay. when it is going into a very long wait, it was uh, suggested me to, to check the option, to pay the menu, the option uh, bypass. Yes, uh, yes. yes. And this yeah. result is for that, but why? Okay, so that's that's one of the things, that, that's what, that's, it's probably from hearing about yours that uh, had me mention that earlier, is that in general, we're, we're not going, you know, we don't suggest you uncheck that unless we tell you to to do so, like like in your case, what that thing is doing is it's going out and it's running a check on the drive and checking the volumes in, in, in particular. And what's what it's doing is it's looking to see if if it's 
if the volume is use essentially if the if the disk is usable. And if it if uh, in certain cases you know there's you know the the previous you know the previous setup on it would make it where OS2 is not able to see any volumes on it. And in which case what you can that it will give you the options of several it gives you several different options. What I have, you know, you, there's an uh, uh, usually there's an automatic fix button, and you can click fix, and it, sh and it tries to go fix it. My experience that I, when I've needed it, where it's come up and says it can't, you know, it needs something, I've had to go in there and do the thing where it says wipe the first ten uh, cylinders or whatever it is, you know. To, so I, that's what I've had to do. But that's what that's all about: is it's checking to see if that drive partitions are good. The fact that you were able it, it hung there, and you were able to uncheck it, and it, everything was good, is unusual. You know, I would normally expect that if it if it's hanging like that, that it would also have further they issues. We send an email of your problems as well. I suspect that there are a couple of things on your system potentially go wrong. First of all, it seems that the boot time of the system seems to take forever. So Lewis forwarded that email to me and look and uh, Andy to look at your system more in detail. In general, if your system hangs at the disk checker, it should normally do a check within uh, 30 to 40 seconds. If it runs into trouble there, you can disable it in the preboot menu. However, this is not recommended. I repeat, not recommended. If people recommend it in the forums, but you see the issue is, if you do disable it, you can run later into trouble running mini LVM. That tool is not there for fun. It's the, yeah. But if, since it's run into trouble, we can look at your system later. They have the double trouble at that point. Have you got the system with you, actually? Is it a laptop? No. It's a desktop. Yeah, desktop. I can show you later after Warpstock how you can collect info so that you can send it back to Ark Noah so that you can okay. look at it and find out what's going wrong yeah. because we need more info. Okay. Um, you were finished, right? Yeah, there was one other question, but yeah. Uh, what's the status of the wireless LAN drivers? So the status of the wireless LAN drivers. Not done? <laughs> <laughs> They, they are, my understanding is that they should be the next priority and that he's got it close. Um, that if you, if you were at Warpstock or, and I don't know, I guess he probably said the same thing at Warpstock Europe uh, a number of years ago, he expected to be able to get them done relatively quickly. Now, he made that basis of that statement was his porting the, you know, being able to port the, uh, Ethernet drivers. Well, it turns out the wireless is a lot more complicated in everything that's having to happen, ha having to go on. So he's close to being done, but they are still, you know, like I said, they they are more complicated than what what he originally anticipated them to be. So they've taken a lot more, you know, they've taken more time to get done. Plus, the other work that's been that's been done has has taken priority over us having a chance to do them. But my understanding is that they should be essentially the next priority target. So now, whether or not something will change and something else takes precedence, I don't know. But that's currently the next the next plan. You know, plan priority. So anything else for a quick so I can quit going over. <laughs> quick while you're ahead. Yeah. Or behind, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right.